thousands of people will pass through here every day and they stop and we look at the fountains and we look at the ponds. But I really wanted people to think about uh, the things that we don't usually think about. So there's these tiny little dramas going on in the ponds. There's, there's species that are fighting and there's species that are hunting and there's, there's sex and reproduction. Uh, there's probably species living in, of microbes living in these ponds that have never been seen before or have not been described. And all these things are going on right under our noses, right in the city, but we don't think about them and we don't really get to see them either. So I'm trying to get down to this sediment layer I can see at the bottom of this fountain because there's a highlight of, highlight of uh, biological material down there and that's where all the microorganisms are going to live. I think we could get some. Should we get some? So this is my high tech collection device which is a ball jar from the supermarket and we're going to try and get some of the sediment from the bottom of this fountain. Success. This is the lake in Central Park where people come to row rowboats and in the middle of summer this time of year it becomes this really deep pea green colour. Might be quite diffuse the organisms in the water, we'll have to see. If I give it a minute to settle, hopefully if we sit and talk for a bit, uh, this layer of microbes might settle either to the top or the bottom and then we can concentrate them in our sample and get a better look at them under the microscope. I want to try and get some of this green pond scum up into my pipette so I can put it onto the slide and have a look at it. And there we go. About a year ago, I collected my first sample and I decided that I wanted to make some footage myself of the microorganisms. And I wanted to show them in a way that people who weren't scientists could relate to and hopefully uh, they could learn something about the microbes and their biology and something about cells as well. I'm just having a general look at what's in here. Um, looking around for something uh, that I think will make a nice video or a nice image or something that I can tell a story about uh, or something that I can communicate some aspect of biology with. Oh, this is cool. This little snaky looking guy. Yeah, it's a cyanobacteria. This is a green algae up here. And then this little boat, that's a diatom. Sometimes to get a sample of water, I do have to uh, go to some distance. Last week <laughs> in Prospect Park, as I was collecting a sample from the pond, uh, a very kind official told me that I wasn't really allowed to be doing what I was doing and that could I please not remove any materials from the pond. But I did it anyway. <laughs> Sometimes, for the sake of progress, you have to, you know, bend the rules. <laughs> These organisms have a lot to teach us about our ecosystems and about the evolution of life as well. When we look at the tree of life, most, most natural history documentation has focused on things that we can see, that the animals and the plants and the fungi. It's like the tip of the iceberg as far as biodiversity goes and as far as life history goes. There's these uh, microcosms of organisms that are really interesting and really diverse. Um, and we can see them, we just need a microscope.